What's up everybody, you're very welcome along to this Leicester preview video. Now, bit of a heads up, I'm going to have Lee Chappie on to give a Leicester side of this. So he's going to be coming on tomorrow, we're going to be live streaming at 4.30 on Anfield Agenda. So make sure you come over and join us for that. Lee will take us through a full Leicester fan preview of the game. My job is to take you to the red side of it. And as always, this has been brought to you in association with our sponsors, Boyle Sports. As you know, Boyle Sports give us a charity bet for every Liverpool League and Champions League game. We get a 50 euro bet to put on in the hope of raising some money for Pieta House, which is a suicide prevention charity over here in Ireland and this week's bet is chosen by Dylan and here's what Dylan's gone for Liverpool to win and over two and a half goals in the game now if that comes up we will of course put that money into the kitty which will go to Pieta House at the end of the season and all money raised is very much appreciated and again thank you to Boyle Sports for that earlier on today I had the chance to catch up with Leon from Boyle Sports we had a little chat around the game so let's head over and hear what Leon had to say Leon, I don't know about you, buddy, but I, I don't even know how to start predicting this game. Um, no, it's a tough one. The only thing I'm, I mean, the only thing I can predict is we're away from home, and hopefully that'll get back the winning mojo that we felt when we went to London, when we recorded back-to-back -back victories against Spurs and against West Ham. I think many Liverpool fans felt that we turned the corner, but unfortunately, since then, uh, we've kind of gone back to what we've done prior to those two victories and just not play well. Um, I think there's a big decision for our manager and um, our deepest condolences go out to Jorgen and, of course, losing his mom in this extremely tough time. It must be horrific for a son not to be able to go home and be at his mother's funeral. So um, our deepest condolences to him and all his family because it's a really, really tough time. But uh, he's got to try and somehow um, get the troops ready for Saturday. And you know something, um, Liverpool players should be right up for this in terms of what's just happened to their boss and um, to try and put on a, a show for him more than anybody else because um, what he's done for this football club in a short space of time is nothing short of remarkable. I hope he plays one of the centre-backs alongside Fabinho. I think it's time we push Jordan Henderson back into the middle of the park. We're losing the midfield battle. It's evident to see we lost it against City. We lost it against Brighton. We just don't have that tenacity, that that desire to get the ball back. And that's what's made us so, so, so successful, excuse me. Let's not forget, it was those three men in midfield, Fabinho, Wijnaldum and Jordan. They were the reason why we got the ball back so quick. They were the ones who enabled Mane, Salah and Firmino to stay up so high. So we've got to get back to that. Liverpool need to get back to that. Um, Thiago, I would not mind to see him have a game on the bench. I'd like to see Wijnaldum, Henderson and Jones be the three in the middle because I just think Curtis Jones gives us something different to Wijnaldum and Henderson. But I want Jordan. We need our captain back in the middle of the park, Craig, because Leicester can keep the football. And if we afford them the same amount of possession as we have against Brighton, as we did against Man City, we could be in for a very long afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a very difficult trip to the King Power. And these 12.30pm kickoffs always make me nervous. And I don't know if I have any reason why they should. I, I just always feel nervous with them. They seem to, be, seem to be a time slot that can throw up some mad results. But we've got a few injury worries that, you know, we may even not have thought about. I've seen Fabinho missed training the other day. I'd seen a Thiago had missed training the other day. Creeping Kelleher missed training. Genie was training on his own. Jada's not back yet. So, look, we're not looking for excuses here, Leon. We're looking for solutions. I think it's the right way to go about this. And um, would you be happy if we left the King Power with a point? Um, in the current position we're in in the league table, we're now up against one of our competitors for top four. So, to answer your question, I wouldn't be, no. Um, I think Liverpool... In these big games this season, we've stood up to the task. We have a tremendous record against the kind of top six or seven teams in the Premier League, except that defeat against Man City. That's the first time we've been beaten by teams around us. So what I'm hoping is, is getting away from home, going to the King Power. I do take your point about the half-12 kickoff. I absolutely hate them because you never know what's going to happen. But I think this Liverpool team have got to come out. They've got to be ready this was one of the best performances I've ever seen a Liverpool side put together was in the corresponding fixture last season. We were absolutely devastatingly brilliant. Everything we did, it just had purpose. We were at it from the first minute and we're going to need to be against this Leicester side. Leicester, they were lucky. I was praying that they would have been dragged into extra time in the FA Cup game, but they got that late winner 
Ian Acho. We won't talk too much about him. We all remember his diabolical effort when they played Man City a couple of seasons ago. But no, Craig, I think we need to win. Um, I think we've got to we've got to get back on track. We're in a real battle here for top four. Like, let's not forget it. We are in a serious battle to qualify for Champions League football. And that means so much to this football club. People are talking about rebuilding, bringing in new players. Whilst I agree with that, if we're playing Europa League, don't be expecting too many big names to want to come to Liverpool. The Europa League is not where this club needs to be. I fully agree. And, and look, thankfully, our charity bet for the week, he, he's gone positive. Dylan's gone for Liverpool to win with over two and a half goals in the game. So hopefully that comes up. And again, thanks to the good folks at Boyle for giving us that 50 euro charity bet for each game. And look, another few quid in the kitty for Pied de House wouldn't go astray. But from your side, Liam, what have you looked at? I know you look through and you, you like to give us a little insight ahead of the game. Yeah, look, Craig, I think, you know, like Leicester, they don't have a bad um defensive record and there is a bit of an injury doubt about Justin you know and he is he's been one of the fines of the season and Brendan Rodgers like we all know how good he was with Liverpool in terms of finding talent for cheap enough money and um, maybe not so good in terms of when he sold Suarez and who he brought in to replace him however he does seem to be able to pick out young talent and be able to develop them and I think Justin has been one of the star fullbacks of the entire Premier League season so far. So if he's missing, I think that's a, a bonus for Liverpool. I kind of agree with the charity bet. I was going to go Liverpool to win 2-1. Um, will we see Quebec starting centre-half, Craig? Um, I think he's been there now 10 days um, in terms of when the game kicks off. So I think we need a centre-back to play centre-back. We don't need two midfielders playing centre-back. And you know something? I think Nate Phillips has been a little bit harshly treated. I think since he's played, he hasn't done much wrong, in my opinion. And you know something? If we had to, if Fabinho was missing, I would sacrifice Jordan Henderson at the back, as I already said, and I'd play Quebec and Phillips. They're centre-halves. We've got to play players in their rightful position because playing centre midfielders across our back line, it hasn't worked. We're not getting enough of the ball to go and express ourselves in the middle of the park. And when you're chasing the ball and when you're not getting the ball, our front three are left almost starving up front. They're not getting much service. I did have a little look on the ball site, as I always do, ahead of this game. And I believe you went with a 2-1 win for Liverpool. I think you guys have an enhanced price on Liverpool to win and both teams to score, if my memory serves correct from looking at the boil site earlier on. So to anyone that's watching, if you want to back Leon, you'll get an, an extra few quid there if you go on looking at the enhanced offers. Leon, I wish we had more time. I always love chatting with you and I know you're frantically searching there now to try and find exactly what those ads are because I've landed you in it. I've just brought you it have. up there. And <laughs> neither, of us, neither of us had the actual odds to hand, but I just remember seeing that it was an enhanced price on the game. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'll find it before I will there, but uh, I do love it. probably won't. Prices, right? I, t I tell you what, to be fair, it's a very good enhanced price. Liverpool to win both teams to score. If you're going to back the Reds, that seems like the way to go to me for this one. Uh, if I remember something I like as well, Craig, is kind of, you know, you can pick obviously like a Liverpool away, but you can pick a kind of a score group. I almost like this. If Liverpool fans think we're going to win, um, you can back 1-0 Liverpool, 2-0 Liverpool or 2-1 Liverpool, group them together um, and it's 5-2. to two. I actually like that. I think it's a, if you fancy us to win, you're getting three correct scores, chances all together. So I do think Liverpool will win this. We've had the upper hand on Leicester. We seem to be able to get the job done against them. And hopefully this Saturday, it will continue in that vein of form. Leon, as always, a pleasure. And no doubt we'll chat ahead of the upcoming games as well. Thank you very much to everybody. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate Leon and the good folks over at Boyle Sports for backing us all the way this season. Leon, it's been a pleasure, my man. I'll chat to you soon. As always, folks, very interesting to hear from Leon. And look, it is important to remember, as much as he is a representative of Boyle Sports, he's also a massive Liverpool fan. And myself, himself and Ian Brewster get together to do a live stream once a week as well. But you guys are here for one thing and one thing only, and that is my score prediction and my start and 11 prediction ahead of the game. It was very, very difficult to pick my start and 11 because I still don't know, as of recording this, if Fabinho was fit. 
if uh, Thiago is fit. We know that Genie was doing some training separate from the group as well. And we know that Diogo Jada isn't available and that Creevy and Kelleher had missed training. So I tried to err on the side of positivity with my predicted 11. But first of all, let me go with my score prediction and give you my reasoning why. It's, it's never easy to pick scores, particularly with the way we've been playing lately. But as always, you expect me to be positive and I have been. I've gone for a 2-1 away win to the Reds, which matches up quite nicely with Dylan's charity bet. I by no means think this is going to be easy and if we come away with a draw it's not going to be the worst thing in the world but we usually find a way in these big games lately other than of course against Manchester City but other than that when we played Spurs we played Chelsea early on in the season the guys seem to rise to the occasion and I'm always worried about these early kickoffs these 12 30 p.m kickoffs but you know maybe that that worry is is unjustified let's hope that I'm right let's hope that we can go there and get a win We'll also have one eye, of course, on the game against Leipzig uh, next week, which is taking place in Budapest, the first leg, because uh, with coronavirus restrictions, Leipzig aren't allowed to hold that in Germany, or at least aren't allowed to have English clubs travel into Germany. So let me take you through my predicted starting 11 for the game. As always, I'm going to take you through my reasoning, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments section. Let me know if you agree with my score, if you agree with my starting 11. But without further ado, let's get straight into it. As you can see, folks, I've gone for Allison in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold at right back, and Andy Robertson at left back. Now, like I said, the big question, was Fabinho going to be fit? Was Thiago going to be fit? As of recording this, I still don't know, but I've erred on the side of positivity. So I've gone for Fabinho to drop back in at centre-back, and I've gone for Ozan Kabak to get his Reds debut at the left-hand side of that defence. In midfield, Jordan Henderson, Thiago and Curtis Jones. James Milner and, and Gini Wijnaldum to me look absolutely shattered. They've played loads of football this season. Obviously James Milner, like myself, isn't the youngest of men. But unlike myself, is a, is a very fit and uh, well looked after man. But I still think we need fresh legs in there. I still think we need Curtis Jones uh, positivity pushing forward. His... his ability to take a man on his ability to take a risk and Leicester are going to sit back at times and try and spring quick counter attacks with Jamie Vardy and the pace that they have with Harvey Barnes and that as well so I'd love to see El Capitan back in that midfield allowing Thiago to get a bit more on the front foot so I've gone for Jones, Henderson and Thiago and then for the front three look we can't really change it can we it's got to be Mane, Mane excuse me Firmino and Salah um there's no other way of doing it, folks. It's got to be those three. I don't want to see Divock there. Shakiri, I think, yes, maybe, fair enough. You could make an argument for him, but... The boys have shown glimpses of form. Mane wasn't himself in the last game, albeit he was coming back from an injury. Uh, he just didn't look himself. Mohamed Salah is on goal scoring form, so let's hope that continues. And look, we've got to go there and we've got to get at least a draw in my eyes, ladies and gentlemen. A draw wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but a loss, again, would really be a dent in our confidence and would really, really... Um, intensify the pressure on this what is now a top four race for Liverpool in my humble opinion I don't think anybody will catch Manchester City this season I think the title is certainly theirs to lose Leicester have top four aspirations themselves as do of course Spurs Chelsea United Everton Villa a lot of other clubs coming up right behind so we are going to be on our toes and we've got to get a win as I said please do check out tomorrow when I've got Lee Chappie on for a full Leicester City fan preview and I'll be live later on as always thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen let me know your thoughts on my predicted 11 and my score prediction in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and up the reds.